Hello, and welcome back to Pharmacology of the Synapse, Transporters and Depression. In this video, I will talk about the shortcomings of current drugs used to treat depression, the challenges to new drug development, and some agents in the development pipeline, including ketamine, an exciting potential treatment for depression. As I mentioned in previous videos, some of the biggest problems with current antidepressants is their delayed therapeutic onset and an increase in suicidal thoughts and anxiety in early treatment. Another issue is variable efficacy in different people. SSRIs will produce full remission in one third of the patient population, partial effects in another third, and one third will have no benefit from these drugs. So is there a better way or a systemic way to pick a drug to start with? In 2006, the STAR-D study sequenced treatment alternatives to relieve depression, which was a $35 million study, was supposed to answer this question of how to rationally pick pharmacotherapy for depression. In this study, all patients started with an SSRI. Those that did not get any benefit then moved on to various well-tolerated alternatives. And as the patients did not respond, they moved to other drugs that had more side effects. By level three, these patients experienced two drugs without success. In the end, the study failed to find any difference in what therapy was chosen first or what therapy followed after. Essentially, trial and error was just as good. This isn't very satisfactory to patients and their physicians trying to get therapeutic benefit from depression. So with one third of patients obtaining no benefit from antidepressants, what kind of new drugs do we have to offer them? This question is actually difficult to answer because of the challenges in discovering new antidepressants. The principal issue is the lack of understanding of the basic mechanism that underlies the elevation in mood. All of the assays are related to serotonin, and drug companies have used serotonin reuptake assays to discover new compounds, but they just keep finding more of the same type of drug with the same limitations. Another big issue is the lack of good animal models of mood disorders. One of the most well-known tests for antidepressant-like behavior in rodents is the forced swim test. In this test, mice or rats are placed in a cylinder of water for about five minutes. The animals initially swim around a lot, but after a while they stop swimming and just float. All FDA-approved antidepressants cause the animals to swim around for longer. But you can see how difficult it is to relate what is happening in the forced swim test to human depression. In addition, the drugs produce immediate effects in this test, after a single administration, which is also very different from their real-world therapeutic benefit. Some researchers think that the force swim test measures a stress coping strategy rather than depression-like behavior. Other animal models of depression include the tail suspension test, the sucrose preference test, and the chronic un unpredictable stress model is maybe a more valid model of depression and it is a newer model that has been studied. There are also challenges in clinical trials of depression drugs. In this graph that you see a meta-analysis of multiple studies showing increasing drug effects on the y-axis, but it also shows increasing placebo effects on the x-axis. The placebo effect can be quite large. Just being under a physician's care and in the trial itself can improve mood for many subjects. Other pro problematic issues in clinical trials include eligibility issues, so children and adolescents are often excluded, as well as exclusion of patients that have comorbid depression with other mental illness conditions or physical conditions. And we know that depression is frequently comorbid. One of the most exciting developments in depression research is ketamine. Ketamine is already an FDA-approved anesthetic, and it acts as a non-competitive NMDA receptor antagonist. This is the glutamate system. The first clinical trial for ketamine was in 2000, and the researchers were very surprised that this drug was fast acting. After 30 minutes to two hours, patients reported an elevation in mood that persisted after the drug was cleared. This fast action suggested that ketamine may be acting more directly on the neural mechanisms that mediate an elevated mood compared with previous drugs. 
One of the most exciting developments from the ketamine trials is the proposed new mechanisms of, mechanisms of action for depression and mood, including a role for the glutamatergic synaptic system, a role for neurotrophins, which include BDNF, and a role for increased synaptic plasticity on neurons. So neurotrophin and synaptic plasticity involve molecules that are important for their survival, development, and function of neurons. And the idea that synaptic plasticity is fundamental to mood is an exciting development in the depression research field. Other areas of research for the new classes of antidepressant drugs include multimodal serotonergic agents that have enhanced serotonin subtype selectivity, triple uptake inhibitors that have actions at serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, neurokinin-based therapies such as substance P and other peptide modulators, neurogenesis-based treatments such as use of different neurotrophic factors, and glutamate based treatments that follow the example of ketamine. Other areas of interest include nicotinic receptor-based treatments and anti-glucocorticoid therapies, since the glutocorticoid receptor system is involved in stress responses. <laughs>